evil lurks in the mind of a man. What's up, guys? <laughs> Ladies. And welcome back to another episode of Action, Action Figure, Figure Prop, Prop Shop. Shop. So in this video, I'm going to be doing things a little bit different. Normally, I'd have a badass prop that I just made, and I'd go through the process on how I made that prop, so you guys could try it at home, or be inspired to do something similar. But I've been getting a lot of requests to do collection videos, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to pull out some of my prop inventory, sift through it and kind of show you guys what's available out there for toy photography and your collection and maybe hunt down some props that you didn't know were available or get you thinking outside the box. In this episode we're talking street side and alleyway props. So kicking it off, I'm gonna show off some of these palettes. Now these are all palettes that I made and these are some of the first props that I made like a long time ago. These three being I think the first because these were the ones before I actually got the slits for the forklift or pallet jack because I kind of just made it solid and uh, yeah these are really fun and easy to make um, these are just popsicle sticks that I just cut the ends off kind of sanded them a little bit and then uh, with like a pen I just kind of poked a little dots for like the nails Especially when the pallets get water damaged, you start to see a little black around it. So I never bothered trying to put like actual nails, just the little dots would do for me. And then this is just scrap balsa wood that I had that I just cut out the little rectangle for the forklift forks to go in or pallet jack or whatever. And like I said, these are really easy. And then oh, I stained them with, uh, I would just get watered down like brown acrylic apple barrel paint. And just brush it on there. And then once it dried, it kind of gave it a worn look these are really easy to make you can bust a bunch of these out just put a movie on grab a bunch of popsicle sticks and some scrap wood and you can make a bunch of these i really like these shopping carts they're pretty cool they're a little on the big side though um here's a larger marvel legends figure you can see that looks ridiculous i mean he's a pretty tall dude in the shopping carts going up to his sternum i mean it, like costco shopping carts are pretty large so this one, what I did, I took this plastic off and I bent the handles down. I just have yet to put a little bar across. And I think that would be okay. Because you can see it's like right at his waist. So that could be like a big like Costco type shopping cart or like a large grocery store shopping cart. But yeah, rusting them up and weathering them would look pretty cool as like a background in like an alleyway or, or what have you. And everybody's favorite prop, the dirty toilet. So these two are from the WWF, Jack Pacific, like grapple gear and like from the wrestlers. Like these are the accessories that came with like some of the old wrestlers. Um, I think this one might be an original toy that I had when I was like a little kid. It's obviously missing the top piece. Um, this one I probably got like at a thrift store with like a bunch of wrestlers in it. It's got the little gimmick where the guy's like gargling because he's getting a swirly or something. And then this one's actually one I found it in a bag of barbie accessories at the thrift store it actually used to be pink um but i spray painted it white and then i just like weathered it and made it like super gross with like black acrylic paint like watered down i haven't really used these in too many shots maybe some like background stuff but not really into like bathroom humor or nothing like that when it comes to photography another fan favorite is the bob and doug mckenzie strange brew beer boxes so um i actually have these right here so McFarlane came out with a Bob and Doug McKenzie strange brew figures from the movie and those guys came with a lot of good accessories some of those being these beer boxes so you have these ones which are like the smaller ones these are like uh, these are supposed to house the uh, red stripe looking bottles and then you got like the bigger ones that are kind of like Budweiser looking and then Straight up McKenzie ones. And then these are ones I made. Oh, these ones are the ones I made. So I made some Punk Weiser boxes. I also had some uh, Punk's Blue Ribbon, like PBR. Uh, 
uh, I gave all those away though, so I don't have any of those. But I still got a couple of these left. I, I need to make more. But yeah, these are always good. Background pieces, easy to make. Milk crates. You can't have an alleyway without a milk crate or two in there. And these are usually orange like this, or like a neon green. These are from like the Shopkin style figures called Grocery Gang. Um, I was first turned on to these by the DMC. So shout out to him. He actually sent me a couple and then I was able to hunt down a bunch after that. But shout out to him for bringing me on to these. And these are ones I painted. So this one's blue and then I weathered it. And then these ones are obviously black. Um, the only thing is that it has the opening. So you can see it has like the opening right here. But other than that, you can usually hide it. Put like two next to each other or like put it against the wall or something. Or put something in there. Like I have a bunch of records that I put in there. Um, but these are great. If you can find these, these are awesome. These are awesome props right here. Another kind of must have is the oil drums. And when they're brand new, they usually look like these. You can find these at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. You just gotta take the white crap off or paint over it. And then, you know, weather them up. You can paint them different colors, put logos on them, hazardous waste, toxic, stuff like that. These are really easy to find, inexpensive. Easy to customize, really good for beginners too. People are just starting out trying to learn dry brushing or a good uh, way to use rust on these is using a sponge. I learned that from Henry Beltran. We had him on the Triple C podcast one time and he suggested using a sponge. Um, and that works out great. Um, especially on this one, I like the way the rust came out on this one. So one of my favorite props to try to build up a different variety of is tires. Fun fact. My nine to five job, I'm actually a grease monkey, so I work in an auto garage and I deal with tires a lot. So it's kind of cool seeing all the different uh, tread designs and styles. I mean, we got some high performance tires and then these like knobby mud terrain style tires. And then these little ones right here are from a model car. Um, so these would be smaller tires. Maybe you can find like on a Geo Metro or some tiny car like that. And then these ones are actually from RC cars. I was at the thrift store and somebody donated a bunch of RC car parts. And so I took all the tires out. And then these are actually like really like squishy rubber. So these are cool. And I've been wanting to weather them. Kind of maybe with some sandpaper or something. Wear down the tread a little bit. Give us some like irregular wear and some wear and tear on them. Maybe put powdered pigment or dry brush on them. Just to so they don't look brand new sitting in a stack. Another must have prop if you have an alleyway set up is a trash can. And this is just a real simple trash can um, from the WWF Jazzwares like grapple gear style. Um, has a plastic lid, the trash can's rubber, and then these trash bags are super easy to make. You can just get grocery bags, uh, if you can still find grocery bags like these. Um, I know a lot of places in California you can't get bags, but you just get the bags, just fill it with paper, paper towels, or whatever, and just stuff it in there. These are really easy props to make to kind of accentuate the trash. And I think you could find these uh, fairly easy for fairly cheap on eBay or different uh, sites that have like wrestling figures and stuff. So I don't think you can ever have enough random scattered trash. Maybe not in a setup, but on hand to put in a setup, whether it be like an alleyway or like on a street. Um, so I got a hobo mattress right here. And this is just a piece of cardboard, just some random piece of cardboard that I had. And what I did, I just cut out the pattern like it would be a box that got decompressed or whatever and then just weathered it with markers so those are cool to have uh, maybe try to find cardboard that's a little thinner than this all the ones that I had thinner I kind of sold or gave away um, but yeah try to find cardboard that's a little thinner than that and then I got some random pizza boxes that I made these ones are just out of paper and then you got some food bags that are smashed up random paper this is a newspaper I printed and a good effect to get it really nasty is let it soak for a sec in warm water and like tea like I'll, I'll put um like black tea bags in warm water and then use that water and kind of put some paper in it and then crumble it up and cover it in paper towels and stuff it in a book and then so it'll dry flat so you can have it flat on the ground but it's all like all trashed and then the uh the tea will kind of discolor it and everything help weather it so I did that so I did the, that same tea kind of technique these are just from a local pizza place around here I just got the flyer uh, Chinese food 
Chinese takeaway container. I think this came from the iZombie figure. Hmm, can't remember. Uh, empty Cheetos bag that I made. Uh, more Pizza Place flyers. Just random cardboard that I weathered. Um, this is this little milk container. Someone had the file on it's this cool like design. This 3A milk. Can't remember who had it, but they put the on one of the 3A groups. They put the uh, PDF so you can print them and make them at home. And these bottles right here, talking about the Bob and Doug McKenzie sets from earlier. So these have really great beer bottles. And what I did is I casted some, made a darker color, and then I put my own label on it. So the Punk's Blue Ribbon. So I made a bunch of these. I had these for sale for a while. I ran out, so I have to make more. But yeah, never have enough beer bottles. And then you can find like little soda cans like this, like a Hobby Lobby or Michael's, just little dollhouse soda cans. There's a hubcap that came with the model kits for those tires, for the littler like Geo tires. The uh, model wasn't a Geo, by the way. I just keep saying that because Geo Metro is the smallest tires that I've ever worked on. I think they have like 12 inch wheels or something. I don't know. Not really important, I guess. And then we have some rattle cans. So I got this from Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, NWO. There's like a two-pack, and they both come with the spray paint can. So what I did, and it's just all solid black. So what I did, I made a Krylon label, and then I painted the top silver, the bottom silver, and then the nozzle red. So, and I also casted a bunch of these. I sold a bunch of these too. I ran out and need to make more. And then my homie Steven Fernandez, he made me a bunch of bottles. We got like WD-40, Flex Seal. Lysol, so these are really detailed. These are really nice. So these are really cool and really detailed. So shout out to Steven for hooking these up. And he also made some spray paint cans too. Um, and these ones came out really nice. These vending machines came from like the Me World play sets that were around for a little bit. I'm not sure if they're still around anymore. Um, they were around for a while, especially uh, when Toys R Us was still active. But I got these actually at Kmart when Kmart was going out of business. And these they had a bunch of these for cheap, and I scooped up a bunch. They're a little on the short side. You can see he can see on top of the uh, vending machine, so it's not 100% accurate. Tour, maybe for Marvel Legend. Background, maybe. I'd say it'd be more closer to like a 3A figure. Um, but these are cool to have. Um, so obviously this is what it looks like, purple. I spray painted this one black. I made another one, uh, but I sold it. And put a logo on the front right here, like a soda machine. I put like a Coke logo and made it a Coke machine. So these are kind of cool where you can do different things. You can either have it with the window where you can see the bottles at the snacks in the window. Or you can put logos over the front of it. And like I said, a little on the short side. You can always probably raise it up a little bit with something. Or just use smaller scale figures or have it in the back where they're not right next to it. Because typically... Um, you can't really see on top unless you were super tall. Yeah, I think for it to scale, at least to loot cage, I think it should be at least. Because when I walk up to a vending machine, I think I'm like eyebrow or I could almost see like from my tippy toes I could see on top. But usually like something like that. So you can raise it a little bit or just have it off in the distance where you can't really grasp the scale. So I use this door sometimes as just like a background piece or I have a couple dials where I have a door. Um, rectangle cut out where I could just slide this in and this came from uh, another WWF action figure actually sorry WWE because it's a newer one uh, and these came with the APA I think either Farouk or Bradshaw one of them came with the round table and then the other came with the door so what I did I painted it brown and then just used black to accentuate and bring out some of that wood design and then just put like some slaps and random graffiti and then on the glass the razor blade I kind of hacked into it and made some breaks and cracks and chips so these are kind of cool have either like a busted door to a busted door in a back alley or what have you and then the fire hydrant uh, fire hydrant and the basketball hoop these came with the jazz wears NBA heroes um, there was like a playset where you get like a locker a bench fire hydrant and this fire hydrant actually had like a gimmick where you push down I think on the top of this and the side shoots out but I just glued that down because I don't really care about the gimmick um, and then I had to repaint it or I painted it up a little bit to 
give it a little more realistic and grunge. And this basketball hoop's pretty cool. It just comes with like a, a cardboard like um, half court and then like a background and then you get the hoop, the fire hydrant, a locker, a bench. I don't think it can, it might have came with the figure too, I can't remember. But at one point, uh, again, when Toys R Us was active, these were like really cheap. They went on clearance. They went on heavy clearance. So this dumpster was one of the first props that I made. I never made a video on it, but this is uh, made out of balsa wood and popsicle sticks. So, and then I used a hinge from an old box. And this thing's old, it's coming apart. But I used a hinge from an old, like, little wooden box. Uh, the only things that are popsicle sticks are the top, top design, and then I think, like, these angles right here, and then the top right here, and the bottom. Everything else is balsa wood. These are beads, like wooden beads. So this is all just balsa wood, carefully put together and then weathered with acrylic paints and a little on the small side uh, definitely a little on the small side but I always liked the way this one looked I think I got the weathering pretty solid on this one and it's pretty skinny too so scale I was a little all over the place with this thing but it was one of my first builds been meaning to make another one you can buy prefabricated plastic ones off some of like the wrestling action figure websites. I bought a couple of those and weathered them up and put graffiti on them and sold them to various people. So those are fun to do too. But making them from scratch out of balsa wood is a pretty fun little project you can do. Another balsa wood project I did, which isn't as easy, this was actually pretty pretty rough, was a uh, this phone booth. And I did an episode of Action Figure Prop Shop on this one. So I got the working doors. Plastic windows, and then you get the little phone inside there, made out of foam. Actually, have a resin cast telephone booth phone that I got from Chris Espinosa that I've yet to paint. So I've been wanting to replace the foam one I made with a more realistic, better design one. So I've yet to do that. But yeah, so check out the check out the episode of Action Figure Prop Shop when I made this. Pretty cool video. Again, scale a little all over the place on this. Height wise, it's good. It's a little big. Phone booths normally aren't this roomy. Usually you're pretty crammed in there. You can almost freaking live in here. So this is a prop that I haven't really shown off too much. I did it in one picture and I think that was about it. So this is my Palatero man cart. And what this is, is a WWF Jax Pacific grapple gear playset hot dog cart. Now, uh, I think before it just said like hot dogs and might even had a picture of a hot dog or some like stripes down the side. So what I did, I just got a bunch of different stickers and ice cream decals that the Palatero man would have on the side of his cart. And I just slabbed those all over the sides. And then the top, I had to make a lid because you can see it just has like the holes right there. I was missing a bunch of pieces. So what I did, I got like an old hotel room key and I cut that apart, painted it silver, made a little handle for it. And then this, I think is, yeah, it's just Legos. It's like some type of Lego. I'm not sure what for, but it looks like a handle, so I used that. And then this is just a piece of plastic that I painted silver. And then I taped a bunch of different bags of Cheetos and Takis to the side right here. So uh, I was going to do a video on this one, but it's pretty self-explanatory. If you see the uh, hot dog cart, you can see I just did a couple different modifications just to transform it from the ice cream cart instead of a hot dog cart. And again, I mean, Jack Specific probably had like some of the best props you can get. Uh, we got this cool refrigerator right here. A little heavy on the weathering though. Um, this is factory weathering. I didn't do this. You can see it's heavily weathered. But just the detail and functionality of these props was over the top. And uh, I wish I had some. I wish I had all of my props because I had so many of these. Uh, not refrigerators, but just the Jack Pacific uh, WWF props. Because back in the day, I remember Target would have be just flooded with these. And then the new stuff would come in, and they'd put this in the end of the aisle, and it would always just be like, everything is under $5. So I'd end up getting so many of these. And, you know, the scale's pretty good. And we got some more random props. This is just a gas can. I think this, I'm not sure what this is for. Um, I hit up the thrift store a lot, and I find bags of... Uh, like Barbies and sometimes they'll have accessories. 
kind of sift through it if they have enough props it makes it worth you know paying the couple dollars for the bag of shit then you know i'll grab it this was inside one of them and then these are really great so they're propane canisters but they're actually pencil sharpeners but these are great props right here i uh, just need to be repainted take the sticker off and then yeah just repaint it weather it and these are great props right here uh i'm not sure if you could find these in stores i had to buy them on ebay through a chinese seller you know, usually you buy just a handful of them and a couple bucks. Takes two, three, four weeks to get in. But, you know, for the price and the quality, it's pretty good. So your alleyway's got to have a rat or two. And these are from a Nosferatu. I think it's a McFarlane figure. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but he comes with a bunch of these rats and a rat base. So these are really cool. So going old school again, back to some old props that I made. It's this little newspaper dispenser made out of balsa wood and some newspapers inside we got homeboy Dexter Morgan in there front page of the news tie and I made this so long ago and you can see the scale is way off I don't know I don't even remember what figure I scaled this to or I think I just made it I'm not really sure some of my first props before I was actually like heavily into photography when I was just collecting and just making stuff. I really wasn't too concerned about scale. I was just making cool stuff. But now I do realize that scale is important because this guy's like way too tall. If I was getting a newspaper and this machine was that small, I'd be so pissed. Having to, uh, the money part is actually kind of accessible. You just put it right there, but having to bend like all the way over to get the paper. I don't read the newspaper, so I mean, I guess the machines could be this small. I doubt it, though. Cause it's ridiculously small. But I always thought this was a cool kind of prop. So that about wraps up the first installment of Action Figure Prop Shop, the collection. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and let me know what you guys want to see next. I got food, weapons, vehicles, electronics, sports equipment, all kinds of different things. So I'll be pulling together groups of different props, and let me know what you want to see, and I can showcase them on the next episode. And thank you for watching the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out some of my other videos. You can follow me on Instagram. My handle is punker underscore Mike. And we'll see you next time. Another fan free. Whoa.